Hi, Jessica Ball here with the Jessica Ball team at Remax Traders Unlimited and I wanted to chat real quick about what earnest money is. So earnest money, um, or sometimes when I'm talking fast and going through a contract really fast with someone, I call it EM. So if you ever hear me um, say EM, that's just realtor lingo um, and what that stands for is earnest money. So earnest money is the amount that you're willing to put down uh, when you make an offer. So you may be writing that check handing it to your realtor, handing it to me, uh, and I'm gonna hang on to that uh, until we have our offer accepted. As soon as that offer is accepted, we then, I have um, till the next business day to get that over to the listing agency. Okay, there's very strict rules, um, state rules on how earnest money contract and state rules and, and regulations and guidelines on how earnest money is handled because it's other people's money. And so we have very strict rules on how that's handled. So. I gotta get that over to them within 24, with the next business day actually is how that reads. Um, so I think they did 24 hours on the last contract and we did an update. So now it's um, it says within the next business day. So um, that could be, you know, say we come under contract on a Friday, that's gonna be Monday. We come under contract on a Sunday night, that's gonna be Monday. Uh, so it's important to have that ready to go. So with that being said, um, when the amount, it's important to talk about that. So the contract reads, uh, the suggested minimum is 1% of the purchase price. So if you are making an offer of $100,000, that is $1,000 is 1%, okay? Um, and if you are making an offer of 50,000, that is $500. So that is the suggested minimum. Um, there is all sorts of different, um, thoughts and theories on, you know, well, a thousand is just enough for, you know, until you get into hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, but I would caution you in, in really thinking about, um, your earnest money also tells a seller how serious you are on purchasing. And so it's really important to make sure that you are letting them know you're serious with putting down, um, an amount that you deem appropriate for earnest money. And so, um, there's that. Uh, and we can talk more in detail about what's appropriate for you in that price of house and that kind of stuff. Actually, some houses um, and some, um, particularly if we're dealing with maybe a relocation company that has the house um, up for sale, they have some specific requirements that certain price range of houses, um, you have to submit a certain uh, amount for your earnest money. So we'll look at that as well. So um, one, the amount. Um, and then uh, the other thing is um, you need to have that in an account and ready to go because it is going to get deposited. Um, like I said, it's got to be turned over uh, the next business day. And then from there, you know, the next business day deposited, blah, blah, blah. So you need to have it ready to go. It needs to be able to leave your account. Um, that check cannot bounce. That's very, very bad. Very, very bad. That's actually the reason. One of the reasons they have you do it is because they need to make sure you actually had money in your account. Um, and that you wrote a good check. Uh, and so they, the, um, they have to wait till it clears. Their lender is gonna make sure that clears. Um, that's part of their process in the lending if, you have, um, if you're getting a loan, uh, if it's gonna be a financed offer. And so um, needs to be an account. So that may mean that you need to you know, move some money into an account in advance, because keep in mind, if you move money into an account, it may take a day or a couple days to that, for that to clear in that account um, to show up in there. So may need to do this in advance. Um, again, this is one of those things that uh, puts your best foot forward, get yourself prepared uh, before you know we write that offer, before we go out and find that house of your dreams, because when it happens, it happens fast, and you're like, this is it, let's go, and it's like, okay, how much earnest money? What's earnest money? You know, w if we already had this conversation, that goes way smoother, and we can really pick up and get that offer in for you so that you can start the process of buying your dream home. Um, the, so you want to make sure you have that money in there. Also, depending on who is purchasing the house, so let's say um, let's say it's a husband and wife, but the wife is purchasing the house, um, or she's the only one that's going to be on the loan. Let's say so for whatever reason, um, the husband's not going to be on the loan. It's just going to be the wife. Then the check needs to have the wife's name on it you know it's like she or she her name has to be on the account now the husband can be on the account too but it can't be an account where it's just the husband's account um and he writes the check over you know um it has to be the person who's going to be on the loan also has to be on that account that the earnest money check comes from also keep in mind depending on the uh listing agency 
uh, they may require it to be a cashier's check. Um, so that may be something as well. Uh, so something to keep in mind, depending on if um, there's distance uh, um, of where your banking institution is and getting that check, you know, that quickly may not be feasible. Um, wiring it may be important. So um, knowing how that process works uh, and we would get the wire instructions for the company it needs to go to and we'll talk about wiring um, on another video, but uh, that's, um, that's important to know in advance as well. So what happens to earnest money though when something goes wrong? Uh, and that's actually spelled out several different times in the contract. Uh, and so let's say your financing falls through, you know, at no fault of yours. Um, you're, you know, it, it, you didn't purposely make your financing fall through. Um, and it, then you would get that back because it's contingent on you um, being able to get that loan. So if you didn't get that loan, then your earnest money go back to you. Uh, if let's say we're doing inspections and we find the house is imploding in on itself. Um, I'm going to use some drastic terms here. House is imploding. Uh, and so you want to um, ask the sellers, hey, we want you to fix this imploding issue, whatever that may be. Um, and the seller says, heck no, not doing that, tough. Well, if it's a contractual issue, uh, then you would have an option to then back out of the contract, terminate that relationship with that contract, um, as long as it's a contractual issue, which Another time, another video on contractual issues and repairs and things. But uh, so the in that case, you would get that earnest money back. Now, let's say that we're a couple weeks in and all of a sudden you're like, oh, shiny new house. I want that one instead. You would lose your earnest money um, if you said, nope, I got to cancel this contract. So not only would you lose your earnest money, but you'll have the nice chat from me where I would say you also need to probably talk to an attorney because um, you could have other um, liabilities and damages for trying to cancel this contract. Um, and so there's, there's more to it than that. So really, if, if you are going to see this through to your best ability, um, then that earnest money then gets applied at, um, closing to your expenses. So it's, it's like you're prepaying some of those expenses with that earnest money. Um, but for a seller, Hey, they're putting some earnest money down. So if they just like take off and run, um, I've got a little bit here. Um, they had a little bit of skin in the game. I've got a little bit here because I took this house off the market. Um, potentially, you know, other buyers were wanting it and now they're gone. They found another house or, or whatnot. So the seller could have, um, some, you know, loss there, uh, which is why, um, lawsuits and stuff, um, could become a really reality, uh, if you, um, did choose to leave um, a contract or terminate a contract, um, which is why we always talk about it's important to have uh, an attorney um, consult you in that situation. So, um, sorry, had a little distraction over here. Uh, little one trying to come in. So, the, um, and then I lost my train of thought. Earnest money, earnest money. Oh, getting it back versus not getting it back. So basically, if you plan on seeing it through, you're gonna have your earnest money applied at the end. If you plan on being like squirrel um, and one out of it, then you're going to lose your earnest money and potentially have other um, consequences. So that's that on earnest money. So we'll chat more about that when we're filling out the contract, but wanted you guys to have um, a heads up on what that means. So particularly if you hear me say EM, earnest money. Talk to you soon.